though more than doubled its profits to $219 billion, all while price gouging customers at the pump, not because of supply issues, but because they can. Republicans opposed solutions that we even put forward, like a windfall tax on price gouging on big oil in order to prevent this kinds of behaviors. But fossil fuel companies, moreover, already have thousands of unused permits on public land. In fact, the Constitution states on a formula which considers your income in 2020, how many dependents you have, and what the Franchise Tax Board knows about you. So, if you already got a Golden State stimulus check last year by direct deposit, your stimulus will come to you between October 7th and 25th. Everyone else will get their direct deposit between October 28th to November 14th, so long as their banking information. A very big important day is coming up for many Americans. Democrats and Republicans are finally coming together to propose new legislation. Several proposals have been proposed in Congress, and these new plans will provide low-income households with at least one bonus stimulus check. After nearly 100 consecutive days of falling gas prices, fuel costs have spiked in recent weeks. And this time, the price increase coincides with the lead-up to the midterm elections, and the trend could determine which party gains control of Congress. The approval rating of President Biden which is an indicator of Democrats' election prospects, has also tracked closely with gas prices. In conjunction with months, long falls in prices from their summer peak, Biden's approval has surged. And since the increase in prices took hold two weeks ago, Joe Biden has risen 1.1 percentage points in approval ratings. Joe Biden also announced moves that aim to address the oil supply shortage behind the cost spike, including a scheduled release of millions of barrels of oil from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve. But the price of gas and the recent movement of that price varies dramatically across key midterm states in some states like New Hampshire and Pennsylvania. Prices have already been increased or even fallen over the last month. In Arizona, a swing state host to highly contested races for governor and senate, the price of a gallon of gas stands at $4.40, a figure roughly 15% higher the national average of $3.82. According to AAA, moreover, the price of gas in Arizona has risen more than 8% over the past month. In Wisconsin, where a high-stakes Senate race could determine which party holds a chamber, the price of a gallon of gas stands at $3.67 gallon. While that, fight, while that price falls below the national average, it reflects a recent surge of more than 5% over the past month. To address the gas prices, the Democratic candidate, the state lieutenant governor, says on his campaign that he would end government subsidies for oil and gas companies, which he claims have enabled high profits. And the state with the highest gas prices could determine which party remains control of the House of Representatives. Gas prices in California stand at $5.83 a gallon, which puts the, which puts the, about the Niagara average national, which puts the price about 52% higher than the national average. That price has spiked nearly 8% over the past month. In responding to these increases, various members of Congress introduced bills to send direct aid to families to bring down gas costs. Mike Thompson, John Lauren, and Layson Underwood all released a proposal for everybody that would offer a $200 gas credit for $100 to qualifying households who live in areas where the average price of a gallon of gas is over $4. Representatives Larson said in a statement that the crisis is putting a strain on our economy and I am proud to be working to introduce this legislation to provide middle class Americans with monthly payments to ease the financial burden of this global crisis. And after the details of the proposal were made public, Joe Biden announced that the U.S. would move to have a million barrels of oil released from the nation's strategic reserves. The additional supply that has been flowing into the market has helped to bring down costs. Supply chain disruptions occur. Crude oil prices have also started to increase once again. Many families may finally see some recurring stimulus checks again. Lawmakers have actually suggested that these payments be automatically deposited and mailed out to Americans as long as they meet the requirements. So the latest poll, everybody, asked respondents about the major issues facing the country and the responses highlighted the familiar problems and challenges for millions of people. The economy, inflation, and the health of our democracy. Many Americans have also appointed three rounds of stimulus checks and expanded monthly child tax credits as a vital lifeline during the crisis. 
and the expansion which is passed as President Biden's crisis relief program delivered hundreds of thousands of dollars into people's bank accounts every month, ultimately helping 65 million children and keeping 3.7 million people out of poverty. Let's not forget about the expanded child tax credit. It was heralded as one of the most significant policy achievements of the Biden era. Half of the enhanced sum was made available through monthly payments starting last July, up to $300 per child under 6 and up to $250 per child under 18. Democrats hope to renew the more generous credit this year. The key legislation they hope to pass through a one-party majority fell all apart when Joe Manchin opposed renewing the payments without additional work requirements. And now advocates for the expanded child tax credit say they're looking ahead to next steps. The first opportunity for new legislation could come at the end of the year when Congress negotiates extensions on expiring business tax breaks. Advocates are also looking at new administrative solutions at the IRS and thinking more seriously about state-level reform amid state budget surpluses and new research detailing just how much families benefited from the now expired, expanded federal credit. One lawmaker told reporters that we're going to focus it on over the next couple months to see if we can get it included in a tax extender bill. During the past year, as inflation has wreaked havoc on bank accounts and eroded the value of existing family benefits, lawmakers have faced pressure to offer relief. Republicans have also been facing more pressure to support families because the proposal introduced by Mitt Romney is set to distribute monthly cash payments to parents who has garnered a lot of attention. This Republican proposal includes a requirement that families earn at least $10,000 to receive its full benefit, the kind of work requirement progressives rejected during reconciliation. And to reach a bipartisan deal at the end of the year, Republicans and Democrats will need to reach an agreement on whether work requirements should be required in order to receive expanded child tax credit payments. And also, let's not forget about this, Romney's new child tax credit proposal, the Family Security Act 2.0, would increase the maximum annual child tax credit from $2,000 to $4,200 a month for each child under the age of 6. Expecting parents could also qualify for an additional $2,800 credit during the final four months of pregnancy. Phase in of Romney's plan is the meaning of the time that families at which families could start receiving their benefit. It's much faster, everybody, compared to the status quo. And right now, the first $2,500 of earnings does not even count toward child tax credit eligibility, when Romney's plan would actually phase in the credit beginning with a family's first earned dollar. 